Namaste, that's good. All right, we're ready to go. All right. Hi everyone, um, my name is Barbara Michelle Edwards. I am a therapist um, for Valley Professionals um, Community Mental Health Center. My oh, I love Valley Professionals. And my office is uh, Ivy Tech, so I see our students down there, um, and I work closely with Ivy Tech to help students with their success with their educational programs. I'm also an adjunct um, instructor at ISU, and so. Um, I love learning and I love being involved with helping with the learning process with students. Um, and today I'm going to talk about having gratitudes in times of challenge. So a topic that, especially right now, there's lots of challenge that um, feel free to, if you have questions or if you want to share anything like that, um, chime in. And I compiled some information today in a PowerPoint presentation, but I have some research in there and some um, different information. And if we run into time, um, like having some extra time, I will show a video um, that I frequently share with regard to just um, building up on resiliencies and um, I think gratitude really connects to it. So I have lots of quotes in the slides, um, so feel free if there's one that kind of sticks with you and you wanna talk about, um, I always appreciate that as well. Okay, let me move my slides. Sorry. Okay, so gratitude. Um, I thought it appropriate to, so let's look at what gratitude actually is. So um, gratitude, it comes from the world frittata. I'm not great at pronouncing sometimes um, other languages, so I apologize if I didn't say that correctly, which means grace, graciousness, or gratitude, depending in, on the context. In some ways, gratitude encompasses all these meetings. Gratitude is a thankful appreciation for, an for what an individual receives, whether tangible or intangible. With gratitude, people acknowledge the goodness in their lives. In the process, people usually recognize that the source of that goodness lies in at least partially outside of themselves. As a result, gratitude also helps people connect to something larger than themselves um, as individuals, whether to people, nature, or a higher power. So this year, I think we have had some hard times, but life in general can have hard times. Um, and so looking at it with gratitude um, sometimes helps us understand the like positives of difficult times. So in this I ask, have you ever recovered from a major illness because the fear changed unhealthy um, and the fear, or because the fear changed unhealthy behaviors and that led to improved health? thought you could not get through something challenging and got through it and it led to improved confidence. Given up on a relationship but then gave it one more chance, focused on the good parts and the love that started it all and it led to the relationship being stronger. And if anyone wants to share, feel free during any of this as well. But definitely something to think about if we think about hard times, the learning that can occur with it. Being grateful can take some work. Um, we may have to change your viewpoint. I always like this, you know, do you see the cup as half full or half empty? You know, it's a lot of it's in the perspective or not being able to see the forest or the trees. And sometimes it takes stepping back, or really challenging the thinking. I share this a lot um, when I'm talking with people about making changes and um, kind of the process for it and use it a lot for processing with groups. But I, um, I believe it says a lot about just like how we work towards change. So it says an old Cherokee told his grandson, my son, there's a battle between two wolves inside of us all. One is evil, it is anger, jealousy, greed, resentment, inferiority, lies and ego. The other is good. It is joy, peace, love, hope, Humility, kindness, empathy, and truth. The boy thought about it and asked the grandfather, which wolf wins? And the old man quietly replied, it's the one that you feed. So I encourage people often to challenge themselves and feed the good um, as it helps build on change, positive change. 
Regret sometimes can get in the way of growth and being grateful. Often a feeling of sadness, repentance, or disappointment or over something that has happened or been done makes it really hard to think of the glass being half full or being able to see that forest through the trees. Um, I found this book and I've heard people reference it at times in other presentations that um, one of which I, if I have time today, I will share um, that talks about the top five regrets of the dying. Um, and the woman that wrote this book worked with individuals that had gone home to die, um, often in hospice type related care. And so in this book, she talks about what she observed from her patients. And these were the top five regrets that she discussed. And I thought how not more appropriate to talk about them when we think of gratitude, because you can look at it as glass half full or glass half empty. So the top five regrets she discussed are, I wish I'd have the courage to live a life true to myself, not the life others expected of me. I wish I hadn't worked so hard. I wish I'd had the courage to express my feelings. I wish I'd stayed in touch with my friends. I wish that I had let myself be happier. And while all these things, and I think all these regrets are very valid, and I could probably attest to that just in the work that I've done, providing therapy um, to individuals across the lifespan, um, those individuals specifically that I worked with that um, were closer to the end of their lives. So I think, I think they're very real, but I also think that sometimes there's changes that we can make to even the way that we think with them. So when we challenge those regrets with gratitude you can ch and challenge the way that you think, I think that there can be a lot of growth and peace that comes from that. Um, and that can help with really hard times. So I, I thought of these, and I thought about how do, you, how do you change the way that you think about them? Um, and these are things that I feel like if I've worked with individuals in therapy over the years, we work towards kind of addressing. So it says, I wish I'd had the courage um, to live a life true to myself, not the life others expected of me. And you could challenge that and say, I worked hard to adapt to what was expected and learned about my true self in the journey. So there's a lot of positivity in learning about who your true self actually is. And sometimes it takes a little bit more time for others um, than maybe where you wanted it to be, but getting there is a positive. I wish I hadn't worked so hard. You could also look at that like I gave to my family so that they would have a better life and not have to work so hard. I wish I'd had the courage to express my feelings. I had incredible strength and felt more than anyone could know, and I was able to carry so much. I think I like that one sometimes the most because, you know, I do work with a lot of people that have been through a lot of very challenging things, and their strength sometimes is phenomenal and amazing. Um, and I wonder, would I ever be able to handle that? And so, Recognizing the strengths in individuals, I think, are and helping people see their own strengths is a super big positive. And so at the end, I think observing that can help with that challenging, with the regrets that can happen. I wish I'd stayed in touch with my friends. I had great friends growing up and relationships that were worth missing, which is, I believe, something awesome to be grateful for. I wish that I had let myself be happier. I realize there were many things in my life to be happy about, and for that I'm grateful. So I thought, you know, we can look at anything, glass half full, glass half empty, but we can always challenge it if we want to really use gratitude to help with difficult times. This is a poem that um, someone had shared with me, I think, in probably a training that I'd had over the years. And it had completely stuck with me. Um, I myself have been on the fast track several times, going to grad school, getting jobs, advancing, advancing, trying to do what I could to um, get where I wanted to be in that next step, in that next phase. Um, and so I think for me, this really registered. And I, I share this frequently with people because um, I think it talks a lot about regret and 
you know, what, what can in a moment, you know, something change, um, allow you to think about what the could have and the should have. And then, like I said in the earlier slide, you know, kind of challenging that and looking at how you can think of it differently. So this woman, um, Irma, she was diagnosed with a terminal illness and she actually has a lot of work out there. You can look her up online. Um, she's got, uh, she uses humor in a lot of the stuff and she actually, her diagnosis seemed to really change the way that she looked at life, which I think is phenomenally amazing. Um, and what I always hope for people that I've worked with that go through difficult times is to kind of look at like reframing everything. So this poem says, if I had my life to live over, I would have gone to bed when I was in sick instead of pretending the earth would go into a holding pattern if I weren't there for a day. I would have burned the pink scandal, the pink candle sculpted like a rose before it melted in storage. I would have talked less and listened more. I would have invited friends over to dinner, even if the carpet was stained or the sofa faded. I would have eaten the popcorn in the good living room and worried much less about the dirt when someone wanted to light a fire in the fireplace. I would have taken the time to listen to my grandfather ramble about his youth. I would have shared more of the responsibility carried by my husband. I would never have insisted the car windows be rolled up on a summer day because my hair had just been teased and sprayed. I would have sat on the lawn with my grass stains. I would have cried and laughed less while watching television and more while watching life. I would never have bought anything just because it was practical, wouldn't show soil, or was guaranteed to last a lifetime. Instead of wishing away nine months of pregnancy, I cherished every moment and realized the wonderment growing inside of me was the only chance in life to assist God in a miracle. And so for those of you that need to, God, as you understand him. When my kids kissed me impeccably, I would never have said no later. Now go get washed up for dinner. There would have been more I love yous and more I'm sorry's. But mostly given another shot at life, I would seize every minute, look at it, really see it, live it, and never get it, give it back. She says, stop sweating the small stuff. Don't worry about who doesn't like you, who has more or who's doing what. Instead, let's cherish the relationships that we have with those who do love us. And so um, Irma really did a lot after she was diagnosed um, to really talk about the difference in the way that you can think. And so in challenging yourself and for her, I think it, I know in a lot of ways she uh, became famous through it. I know I've shared her stuff frequently. And so there's a lot of growth that can happen um, and gratitude. So I found some research out there and um, these were kind of the general consensus that I found with like um, a varied amount of research is that these seven scientifically proven benefits of gratitude. And in this presentation, I have links, um, hyperlinks. I don't know if they, did, did they get the presentation emailed out to them or? They can. Okay. Yeah. So if anyone would like that, there's hyperlinks that can go into more information on everything that I'm talking about today too, um, if you like. I'm a researcher and a reader and I like to find new information all the time. So for those of you that are interested, I kind of set it up that way so you can just click on the hyperlinks. So it says gratitude improves relationship. It improves physical health. It improves psychological health. It enhances empathy and reduces aggression, improves sleep, improves self-esteem and increases mental strength. I don't know about all of you, but I feel like those are things that we all deserve. And um, so I thought it was really interesting to do some researches in the area of gratitude and find out what this all meant. So um, it says in the research, some of the research that I found that feelings of anger, hurt and disappointment can fester and lead to the erosion of a close relationship Thus, the performance of good deeds and the expression of gratitude are vital in maintaining close and satisfying relationships. They help with the bonding process between two people. They establish trust and intimacy. And research has found that making an effort to please each 
other and express one's appreciation helps maintain marital satisfaction over time and can be um, an antidote to some divorces. And I think I mentioned that in the one slide and like kind of challenging the thought um, as, it, as it does. Um, sometimes what I see too, even in you know doing therapy with others, Finding the things that you're grateful for within the relationship can really help build on that relationship. And if you think too, you know, being grateful, and I had a perfect example of this just before I came here today. Um, I like to have a hard copy of a presentation anytime I do it, and um, I was kind of running short of time. And so I have a um, woman, her name's Patty, and she's amazing, and she works at Ivy Tech with me, but she helps me get my copy printed real quick because I don't have access to a, a printer in my office. And um, but just you know appreciating her so much, and then also you know saying thanks. I think it definitely I know builds on that relationship, and it helps with the working partnership when you need something too. Um, and I know just in my work, and I'm sure others have felt this when someone tells you thank you or it appreciates you, it definitely makes a difference, even in sometimes your relationship at work. So it says gratitude improves physical health. Um, some literature suggests that individuals with chronic illness reported less physical pain. Um, a correlation between um, positive psychological attributes such as gratitude um, with improved outcomes in cardiac patients. And then subjects participating in a gratitude meditation exhibited significantly reduced heart rate over those instructed to elicit negative resentful thoughts in themselves. And I think too, if you think about gratitude, just the peace that it maybe brings, I'm sure helps with some of those um, challenges with, you know, racing heart when you're frustrated and agitated and looking at things and maybe more of a negative aspect, but just kind of sometimes that centeredness that can happen, I'm sure is very much connected to that. I have, um, some more information on that as well, if anybody has any questions. Okay. Gratitude improves psychological health. According to Mental Health First Aid, which is an amazing training um, for anyone that ever wants to know more about how to help individuals that may be struggling or maybe they work in or volunteer in a, a setting where they work with individuals with mental health issues. Um, it's a great training for people that don't um, have educational backgrounds in that, but, but want to help. Um, it said research has also shown that by um, consciously practicing gratitude, we can train the brain to attend selectively to positive emotions and thoughts, thus producing anxiety and feelings of apprehension. It says, that when we express gratitude and receive the same, our brain releases endorphins and serotonin, the two critical neurotransmitters responsible for our emotions, and they make us feel good. They enhance our mood immediately, making us feel happy from the inside. So, um, and I have a little chart on the side too that says, you know, gratitude in the brain. It produces that fear and anxiety by regulating the stress hormones. Um, and so that probably also has a lot to do with why the health benefits are there. And I um, have been trained a lot in integrated healthcare, and I see a lot of individuals that if they focus on the things that cause them to feel more anxious and more frustrated, um, they do feel better and they feel more at ease. Um, and that can improve health outcomes. Gratitude enhances empathy and reduces aggression. So, and I think if you really think about gratitude, you know, when you feel grateful, it's hard to feel frustrated at the same time. But it says in here that um, in this research that I found, um, grateful people are more likely to behave in a pro-social manner, even when others behave less kindly. And in the study, um, Participants who ranked higher on gratitude scales were less likely to retaliate against each other, even when given negative feedback. So um, they experienced more um, sensitivity and empathy toward other people and decreased desire to seek revenge. So if you feel grateful for things, 
it would be very hard, you know, and appreciative to feel more negative. And so even in this slide, and I use this quote a lot, it's, it's all about finding the calm in the chaos. And so finding the things to be grateful for, even when there's a lot of things that are messy. And I think in the world right now, we've definitely seen some messiness. Gratitude improves sleep. So um, the psychologist I look up and that did some research on this found that um, people that make a nightly list of things in which they're grateful for, after three weeks, participant reported getting longer, more refreshing sleep. Um, and I, on the opposite end, have told people in the, you know, to start their day grateful. And a lot of times people, after weeks of doing that, um, maybe making a list or, or indicating some things that they're grateful for each morning, definitely improve improve mood. So um, I'm actually, after reading some of this research, going to have that be some like assignments that I do with individuals that I'm working with um, in their therapy process to see if, if um, that actually rings true for them too. But it's definitely something you can try um, if sleep is a challenge for you. And it said, researchers at the University of Manchester in England looked at gratitude and how it might affect people's snooze time. And so it said, um, that those who completed questionnaires that asked about gratitude, sleep, and pre-sleep thoughts, gratitude re related to having more positive thoughts and fewer negative ones at bedtime. This in turn was associated with dozing off faster and sleeping longer and better. And so if you think about that, if you're less like nervous or anxious or worried or having more negative thoughts, it's easier to turn off your brain and, and rest. And the same rings true for um, dozing off. Any questions so far from anyone? No? Wait a minute. I just have one. Sorry. It's up. You're fine. Mm -hmm. Is it in here? <laughs> Carl just made a joke. You're very funny, Carl. He says you should change the title of your presentation to A Tale of Two Worlds. Oh, yes. I like that. Um, yes, and I love um, that poem. I think there's so much learning that can be done done through it, and I think that that would be absolutely appropriate for this presentation today. And so self-esteem. Self-esteem is one of those like hierarchy of needs that we, you know, kind of need to feel good and, and be where we want to be and get to that self-actualization. But on gratitude, um, studies have shown that um, it reduces social comparison. So if you feel grateful and just even grateful for where you are, it makes it less likely that, um, you know, as you're scrolling Facebook or as you're talking to others, you're thinking about what you don't have. Um, it helps people to focus on, again, what you have and than what you don't have. Helps people to embrace themselves more and appreciate their differences. Um, and it helps people to appreciate and be happy for others when they have successes instead of having resentment. And so it says confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air thinking that you're better than everyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone else in the first place. And I can't think of even feeling more of that, like, if you're grateful for where you are, regardless of the situation and what you are, but just being grateful and practicing gratitude it helps you look more internally and be appreciative and be able to see the differences in others and how that's a positive and not something to be um, having angst or frustrations that you're not where they are um, for. And I would think that also, you know, not comparing helps improve those relationships that we talked about earlier too. And the um, mood and mental state. So I can definitely see how it all connects after even doing some research in the area. And so it says gratitude increases mental strength. And um, that's kind of how the video, like, I, again, I'm not sure if we'll have time for all of it, um, but I can at least talk about it a little bit um, and, and send out the links if needed. Um, but it said research has shown gratitude not only reduces stress, but it may also play a role in overcoming trauma. In a study in 2006 published 
and behavioral research um, and therapy found that Vietnam veterans with higher levels of gratitude experienced lower rates of post-traumatic stress disorder. So it's very much a protective factor um, with trauma. To me, that's what that sounds like. And in 2003, a study published in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology found that gratitude was a major contributor to resilience following the terrorist attacks on September 11th, recognizing all that you have to be thankful for, even during the worst times, fosters resilience. So, and the quote too, strength doesn't come from what you can do. It comes from overcoming the thing that you once thought you couldn't. And so I love that. I feel like that um, building up on that mental resilience is something that definitely leads to growth. And so how do we practice gratitude? You know, it's sometimes for some individuals, it can take longer and sometimes less. But a lot of the times there's like lots of research behind um, doing something, you know, for a period of time, even like for some, I've seen 21 days for some, I've seen 90, um, can help with that change behavior to where it automatically becomes more like automatic. And so that becomes your response to stressors, frustrations is kind of like working towards that changing and reframing your thinking to where it comes more automatic. And I work with individuals on that frequently. Um, and I see it the more that something is challenged and those negative thoughts are challenged, the more natural that it becomes for someone to do that. So it says, wake up every morning and think of three things you're grateful for. And like I said, I, I do this often with individuals that really get stuck kind of in some negative and like fear-based or even like kind of stuck in that past thinking that's maybe been challenging, but thinking things that you're grateful for, even if it's that you're grateful that you woke up, even if it's that you're grateful that, um, you know, maybe the sun's shining. It can be as small or as big as you want it to be, um, but finding three things and reframing your thinking. So looking at challenges instead of challenges being opportunities for learning and growth, looking at your failures or mistakes as a part of your journey. Embracing hardships for the teaching. So looking at, again, the learning and the teaching that comes out of hardships. Observe ways to be grateful for what you have and not what you have not. Appreciate who you are and think of your strengths and look at your weaknesses as opportunities for growth. I think when you focus on strength, it really makes a big difference. And I know as a social worker, I've been trained um, in really pulling out and looking for strengths in individuals. Um, and it's really fun to see the way people see themselves after they start focusing on their strengths. We're not all good at everything and that's okay because that's how we counterbalance each other. And I think that that um, is really phenomenal for like working in teams and you know, with friends um, and family. So when you challenge those um, weaknesses with strengths, it can allow a lot of opportunities for growth. Start a gratitude journal. So and there's lots of ways to do that. Um, you can just kind of write things you're grateful for or um, make a list too of, you know, people that you want to um, say thank you for. Um, and then give thanks to those who are helpful to you. Um, saying thank you, please and thank you. I think there's a lot more to that than just the words being words. So, um, and I noticed this um, quote or this little um, quote out there when I was looking up some stuff on like working on practicing it. And I love it. So Piglis noticed that even though he had a very small heart, it could hold a rather large amount of gratitude, which is I think a super big strength being able to hold that gratitude. And so keeping practicing, um, feel your emotions and be grateful for them. Awareness of feeling allows for opportunity to observe for triggers and recognize where you wanna make changes. If we don't feel them and we stuff them, then it's easy to stay stuck. Um, 
I often ask people to recognize your triggers. And I probably say it um, frequently, I, I, probably in most of my sessions, um, com, re repeatedly with individuals, because knowing what it is that you're experiencing and kind of where it comes from allows an opportunity to do something about it. I'm also a huge believer in education being a big part of recovery and kind of becoming in um, the person that you want to be. And so knowing um, and recognizing what you feel and sometimes recognizing what feelings are um, can allow for a lot of opportunity to then understand what you need to do with them. Even the education that comes along from feeling what works and what doesn't to challenge negative thinking or to challenge um, getting stuck in this kind of regret with hard times. Spend. So spend time with other grateful people. And remember the tale of the two wolves with that because it's the one you see. Um, and a lot of the times, you know, in my work with people um, who struggle with addictions, uh, we always would say, people, places, and things. Um, and it, it, we'd say, watch your people, places, and things. And we do that for a reason. Um, because a lot of the times it's where you spend that time and who you spend it with that can direct your patterns of behaviors. So if you spend time with someone who is, um, in the case of it, working with substances using, it's going to be really hard to stay sober. If you spend time with people that are grateful, that's going to um, really have a positive effect on the way that you look at gratitude and practice it as well. Right, it says, write thank you notes. Uh, such an easy task, I think, with this. Um, and I'm not great at it myself, but even after like looking at this gratitude presentation and just the effects of gratitude it has on behavior, um, I think about those thank you notes. Um, and so I think it's an easy way to express the gratitude and also feel good about it. Um, I don't know about any of you, but I've often been like, oh, shoot, I forgot to write those thank you notes for the birthday party. And then time goes and you, know, you think about it a little bit. So write those thank you notes. And then work. Work to let go of the regrets. Forgive yourself and others. And be where you are not stuck in the past, but instead learning from it. And so gratitude and grief, and feel free to ask questions or reflect if you need to or talk about this. Sometimes, you know, tough things happen. Um, we have grieving, and it can be a hard time. Um, it says when you're going through one of life's storms, let gratitude be your umbrella. And if you think about loss, maybe times that you've had really difficult things to cope with, a lot of times, if you really, really think about it, it probably has been gratitude that has helped you through it. But it says to focus on the positive memories, focus on the good, feed the good. If you focus on the sad and the negative, it's important to feel those things. But if you stay there too long, it can lead to depression and um, other challenging mood states. It says turn your attention on how your life was enriched if it, you know, because of that person, that place or that thing that was in it. Attend to learning how the loss changes you in positive ways. Embrace your strengths and identify your emotions. It's really healthy to identify emotions, especially in grief. Spend time with loved ones. Be with others. Talk about it. Talk about the feelings, emotions, talk about the memories. A lot of times people will feel like it's too hard to go back to maybe a family event or to be with people that are reminders. And in a lot of ways, that's sometimes too a big part of the healing process. And so that's where you build on the self and practice good self-care, making sure that you're, you know, avoiding the use of drugs or alcohol, or making sure that you're resting, making sure that you're eating. Um, you know, we saw that frequently when I worked in patient care, if someone's spouse would pass away and then the self-care stopped. And so someone might stop eating or 
stop drinking water, stop, you know, stopping that self care, because it's a, it's a deep sadness. And so redirecting that into remembering to do that, because it also is very hard when you stop practicing good self care, to think clearly, and to think about what your strengths are, and even the importance of being with others. And so to kind of include that there and like kind of working through grief, this year has been a tough year. Um, there's been a lot of learning, a lot of challenges, a lot of changes, a lot of loss. Um, but there are things, I think a lot that we can learn from this year too. And so I'm sure some of you can think about different ways to even look at this, but um, these are some things that I thought of when I thought of this year, um, and I'm um, usually super positive and, and a pretty good at like adapting to crisis and um, I've worked in crisis for years. And so this year was hard. It was a harder year. It's a harder year to provide therapy. It was a harder year to um, connect with people socially and I'm pretty social. So uh, it was a harder year to balance um, things at home and kind of being a mom, being a teacher, being a therapist and, um, you know, doing, doing all that work and doing it well, while also in a pandemic and making sure you have your mask before you leave your house and so many different things. Um, but I think there's a lot of learning that we had through this too. And so think about what these are for you. But I, I said in here, gratitude gave us an opportunity and it is continuing to learn new ways to come together while we are apart. I've heard that a lot too on the news. Um, I've seen, you know, people connect with their families via Zoom and use technology like they've never used before. If you would have told me that I would be doing therapy through video, um, you know, a couple different, a couple years ago, I would have said that, you know, I can see with technology, but like, that's probably not going to happen. And then it did. <laughs> and at first it was hard. It was um, hard to talk to someone on the phone and hope that they're doing well and not being able to see their face. Um, it was hard to do crisis over the phone um, in a pandemic with the hospitals being a little different and everything, but also it taught some amazing skills um, to work with someone from a distance. Um, and it too, I think led to a lot of growth. And so for that, I'm grateful. Redirected thoughts about what's important. And I think this was true for so many people, um, people that stopped working through this and were home with families, people that, you know, lost a job, um, and then had to make a lot of like financial changes in that, um, I think that there was a lot of different things that we've learned and that I really experienced um, with individuals that were going, you know, going through different challenges and changes, like the recognizing of what's important. And so I heard a lot of people say things like, um, they realize that like, they don't really spend that much time with their spouse and that like it was a lot of about like getting to know them and I know just even too, when I work with individuals that retire, um, that's something that they talk about frequently. It's like re-getting, reconnecting to your spouse. So this happened for some people um, before they might get to that stage of retirement where that happens. And so it was interesting um, because I think it helped people really grow in some of their relationships. And I think it helped people work through some challenges. Also, I think it exposed some things that maybe um, People wanted to make changes about, which I think is something to be grateful for. It attributed to many ways um, or to many changes in the way people work together to offer support. Um, frequently um, in human services, we need each other, um, providing like therapy, connecting somebody to housing, connecting someone to medical care. And a lot of times, um, we are 
siloed in our care. <laughs> and so one focuses on one and working together is what we try to do, but we often get so busy. Well, everything kind of slowed down with COVID. And so um, people, I think, started working more closely together. Um, I noticed a, a huge increase in the way that medical and behavioral health providers worked together and communicated. Um, and the inpatient and outpatient and calling the people or using the supports that you um, had maybe gained through the years to get someone help. But I think too, um, we saw schools, um, we saw schools find ways to offer meals to kids that needed it. We saw money being contributed to um, programs and services. We saw a lot of really good things that happened through this. And they were bad, but you, focusing on the good, I think, helps reframe this year in a lot of ways. And I think that's something to be grateful for. T, we t uh, this year taught us a lot about the importance of self-care when we're sick. I'm not sure about you guys, but I don't know how many times I went to work not feeling great before this year. <laughs> and um, probably needed to stay home, you know, probably needed to rest and probably needed to, um, you know, take time, take self-care this year, enforce that. <laughs> and so in a lot of ways, I think we needed that. I think we have needed to really look at how we do like sick leaves and how we, um, you know, I think employers have really looked at a lot of ways for Valley Professionals, I'm grateful. They did an amazing job taking care of us and finding ways to make sure that we can keep doing our work. Even, um, you know, the opportunity to, you know, if you aren't feeling great, um, to be able to take and flex things around a little bit and still be able to do your job a lot of ways too. Um, we learned we could work from home. We learned that, you know, even in that, um, there's a lot of um, opportunity to do things we didn't think that we could. But that self-care when sick, I think, is one of the bigger things I think a lot of people recognize this year. And even to not go into places when you're not feeling well to prevent the spread of viruses and to um, keep things, you know, a little safer for all of us. So I think that's definitely something to be grateful for. This year enabled an opportunity for families to spend more time at home together. I have a big family. I have, um, we're blended, but I have five children. And um, some days <laughs> it was very hard to do therapy over the phone or televideo sessions and, you know, make sure my kids were being taught. And also, um, you know, I have a young, a little one. Um, that turned one through COVID. And so he learned to walk at home <laughs> and um, so busier times. But I got to see that, you know, I got to watch that, watch it happen. I've always been a working mom and um, have recognized that um, my kids in a lot of ways grew up in daycare. Um, and I appreciate it because I've always had amazing providers that have sent pictures and wonderful things, but I wasn't there. And so, um, you know, I might have seen the first steps at home, but you don't really know because they don't always tell you if they actually happened at home or at daycare. But I know they happened at home and I got to see them. And that is something that I'm grateful for. I think I heard that from a lot of families, the things that they learn to do together. Um, I know my kids, we don't have internet um, that we let them on very often, except for this, you know, during COVID and everything, we had to do that a lot more with school. But we do a lot of outside play time. Um, and so it allowed the kids more time at home. It was um, something that I think they really enjoyed. Um, and that doesn't happen you know, all the time. So it's something to be grateful for. Lots of opportunity for families to spend more time at home together. Um, and it fostered the ability for people to spend time on home projects that had been put off for years. And so um, I had um, several people in my work group that were constantly doing projects 
Um, for me, um, I kept up with the laundry better than I'd ever probably kept up with the laundry before um, because I was able to, you know, throw a load in between sessions sometimes or, um, you know, get the dishes put up, little things that, you know, sometimes can bog you down and cause some stress, um, things that people always wish they had the time for. So in a lot of ways, it was a hard time, but it also gave us some time. And I know for some people it was a little different and um, there was some time away. And that I think is hard, but I think even if you look at the ways that you were able to connect in other ways or find ways to keep, keep safe and having your families at home, you know, for those of you that because um, I think we've got some people in the nursing home. Is that, do we have a nursing home or? Westminster Village, a okay. lot of those are independent. Oh, things. okay, perfect, awesome. So, um, but even still, I think for a lot of people I know, we did not go around my parents, um, and my husband's parents for a while just to keep them safe. And, and I know that even kind of going back to the importance of self-care when sick, that was hard, but also I wonder how that kept people healthy just in that process. Um, a lot of times I know our kids, if one gets it, it, they all get it and they'll spread it and it'll go all the way through our whole entire family to grandma and grandpa and, you know, and sometimes it's made them very sick. Um, so it's taught us a little bit about that during that time. And so you unified all of us to think more, again, about safety, sanitation, and health. And it kind of goes back to just even that time and, and being apart, even when we're together. And I think, and I'm not sure if any of you, you felt this, but I felt like I used the phone more. I don't love talking on the phone and I was always a lot bigger into texting because it was just easier. I noticed during this time I picked up the phone more um, and did communication. I think it was because I missed that interaction um, and talking and being with you know people throughout the day. Um, and not just children and, and always not just patients. And so also, and uh, for any of you that have ever taught, um, that I taught that my first semester on campus at ISU last spring, <laughs> and um, you know, it was an interesting time to teach. I luckily had taught online um, and I was set up that way, but some of my learning projects for my students and their last final project were to visit um, resources and like resource sites and they had to do a resource manual and so COVID hit and I had to kind of reframe the whole assignment and come up with different ways for them to be able to seek out like finding resources and so they kind of had to do some online searching and tons of stuff for online so the project changed and I it did for what I was hoping for students it wasn't exactly the same but I helped like one of the projects I had students do was to find a way to um, think about if when they're out in the field work and, and working uh, maybe in the human services profession is how might you work in that time frame what would be some ideas to help patients to help individuals to help families and so even during COVID and like you know I was practicing it at the time trying to figure out ways to support individuals, families, and um, keeping everyone healthy and mentally well, I learned a lot of new ways to do things. And so um, learning changed. And I think that we were able to find new ways to teach and educate. Um, I know some instructors and instructors at Ivy Tech even this semester have found ways to present class material online. I know some of our nursing programs um, and allied health programs, I, it amazed me that how they found ways to teach the students some of those very like tangible hands-on um, programs. So I think we learned a lot about this year. Um, I think we also recognized this year the importance of our educators. Um, I know after this year, I'm so grateful for my children's teachers, not that I wasn't before, but a whole new appreciation um, of the work that they do, because I know what it was like trying to sit down my 
Um, we have a kindergartner, first grader, um, second grader, and we had a third grader. And so we had boom, boom, boom with our blended family and trying to get them to do homework was a challenge. And so um, I learned to be grateful, but I also learned new ways that my children learn um, or learn different ways that my children learn. And so I think we find, I found new ways to help them. And even I talked to their teachers about what I found worked for them. So um, definitely a lot of things that we learned from this year. And those were my personal examples, but I think maybe a lot of you can think of them too. So if we work on like looking to reframe this year with gratitude, I think it, it can really help us not be stuck in the regret and all the, the challenge of the year because there was a lot of challenge. And so it says gratitude makes sense of our past, brings peace for today and creates a vision for tomorrow. Um, and I love that because I think that that bringing peace um, is important and it helps a lot of people stay right where they are and not stuck in regrets of the past or fears of the future, but more of a vision that can be super positive. And so that's the end of the presentation, but I know that there might be some questions and then I also have a video that um, if you guys would like, I can show as well. Okay, everybody, who wants to, to chime in? You got to give me one thing that the pandemic you're grateful for. I am grateful that the pandemic made me sit still for longer than 15 minutes to clean out my closet. Definitely. Okay, so who else? Who, had, who has a good thing that they're grateful as far as what's happened this year? Give me one thing. What do you got? This is Bob, Michelle. Can you hear me? I got you, Bob. What you talking? Uh, I am grateful for the lower credit card bills because I'm not going out to restaurants like I used to. That is, that is a big gratitude oh, thing. It's amazing at how much money some people have saved mm -hmm. because of not being able to go out. You're absolutely right. Definitely hey. a good grateful thing. Yeah. All right. Who well, else? I'm, go ahead, Carl. I'm grateful. I'm grateful because as a result, I've been walking more and feeling much better about it. I took a six mile walk before this session this afternoon. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Well, because, you know, I think that being at home for me, I, I, I spent my entire last three years saying, I just want to be at home for two hours, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and then, by the time that the pandemic was done, I was very grateful to go back to my office <laughs> because I did not want to be in my house anymore at all. So yeah. you know, it's reframing how you think about it, I guess. Yes. Yeah, and definitely. It is, it is because, because Barbara and I also walk uh, usually after dinner around the neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, who else? Any any other things that you're grateful for? Go ahead, Kate. Catherine, I'm, I'm so thankful for my friends and my family who have sure helped out grocery shopping for me and all doing these things during this, during this time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, yes. Okay, go ahead, Karen. Oh, you're, you're still muted. You got to un unmute. Sorry. Um, I'm grateful because I've had... Um, more FaceTime opportunities with my daughter who lives in another state. And so we've been able to, she's been home and I've been home. So we've spent more time um, communicating. So I'm very grateful for that. That's great. That's so great. Okay, Brenda, I see you're unmuted. Me? <laughs> I am finally getting through boxes of memorabilia of the children. So I've been trying to assemble uh, like binders for them. So it's really kind of helped with my clutter. And I'm not finished, but um, it's been kind of time time well spent, I think. Hopefully they'll like it. I don't know. And you can walk so down memory awesome. lane as well. You know, I so love you get, that. You get to go back and look at pictures. I've done that with my parents a couple of times when yeah. I visit their house because, you know, we don't have anything else to do. We can't go out to dinner. Yeah. So, Looking at pictures is fun. All right. Eileen, Susan, Tammy, anybody else 
want to say anything? Okay, go ahead, Carl. I see you. Speaking of doing Zoom, one of the great things we've been doing is having Zoom sessions with the friends we met in Spain last year. So we've got people mm -hmm. from Spain, Scotland, and uh, parts of the United States uh, on an infrequent basis. Mm -hmm. We all get together and relive what we had done there and what's going on now. Wonderful. You've actually stayed in touch with people that you probably would have lost touch with. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, much the same thing, but not nearly as far away, but people that we don't interact mm -hmm. with a lot suddenly have become very important in small little exchanges, um, dropping off some flowers on a porch or something like that. I think a lot of um, kindness has come out of this, that people have had time to, to think of others. Anybody else? All right. Well, I want to thank.